you want to drink a cold, fresh bottle of kombucha. Hi everybody, welcome back to Zevalia with me Zeva and in this video, I would like to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to make the second fermentation phase of your very own homemade kombucha. If you haven't already made your first fermentation phase, you should head over to my channel and find the video there or I will also link that video in the description box down below so make sure you watch that first before watching this one. What is special about the second fermentation process is that not only can you flavor your kombucha in various types of flavors imaginable, you can also add carbonization to get that soda fizzy like feel. So when you use your vessel in the first fermentation phase, you will get carbonization but not much because of the width of the surface and the size of the vessel. But when you bottle your kombucha in bottles, glass bottles, it will help the carbonization process because there is added pressure as you use these bottles. It will create additional pressure as it carbonizes with added sugars inside of the bottle. And don't worry when you add more sugar in your bottled kombucha because that sugar will be transformed in the fermentation process so it will be healthy for you. For the main ingredient, of course, you will need your kombucha ready from the first fermentation phase. Don't forget to check my first video to know how to make this. But before I pull out the scobies from this vessel, I would like to let you know the things that you need to prepare for the second fermentation phase. This here is a small glass jar that I will use to store my starter tea. So that starter tea I will retrieve from this glass vessel. Don't forget it is super important to store away one or two cups of starter tea for your next kombucha batch because the starter tea plays a very vital role in making kombucha. More on that on my first video about the first fermentation phase. And then I also have this big bowl here. This is to temporarily store my scobies as I make my second fermentation and also before I transport the scobies into a scoby hotel or into another vessel to store these scobies. You will also need a ladle or a long spoon. I also have my measuring cups. A smaller teaspoon. Funnel. You can also use a larger funnel if you have one or a medium sized funnel. The one that I have at the moment is this small one here. A jug or a measuring jug. You don't have to use a jug if you don't want to but I find it more easier to use a jug as I pour in the kombucha inside of the bottle. You will see more about this later. And of course the kombucha from the first fermentation phase. You will also need good quality glass bottles, so make sure that the glass quality of your bottles is at least good quality. This is important because when you want to carbonize your kombucha inside of the bottle, there will be pressure building up and you don't want to break your glass bottles and then have your kombucha spilled everywhere, especially if you don't want to burp your bottles. So what is burping? Burping is when you open up your bottles daily to release a little bit of the carbonization so that the pressure will decrease a notch. But if you don't want to do that because some people don't want to release the carbonization effects just to ensure that the carbonization is full on, you know, high quality, some people don't burp their bottles. It is actually best to use a flip top bottle if you have one because that really stores in the carbonization inside the bottle. But even if you don't have a flip top, these glass bottles will also do as long as it has a really tight screw in the lid area. That is the most important. So how many bottles you will need, it really depends on how much kombucha, bottle of kombucha you will make. So don't worry too much about it and just kind of, you know, measure how many bottles you will need. Now let's talk about flavoring. So the main idea of the second fermentation phase, as I explained earlier, is that you're adding extra sugars to add more carbonization in your kombucha to get that fizzy soda-like feel. For an added flavor, you can use fruits, whether pureed or chopped fruits. You can also add certain types of vegetables for an added extra kick. You can also add cane sugars. There are so many flavors out there that you can experiment with that you should definitely try. So for this video, I will be making two special flavors. So the first flavor is lemon and ginger, and the second flavor is raspberry jam. That's right, you can also just simply use jam, what you have in your pantry, 
to flavor your kombucha but make sure that the jam that you use is high quality jam so you know there are those jams out there that really taste too chemically and you can tell that there's not much fruits inside this one has a high concentrate of juice and raspberry fruit so this is why I'm going to be using a jam as an example for this video and in each of the flavors, I will also add a little bit of sugar to give an extra kick for the carbonization process. And if there are any remaining kombucha that does not fit in the first two bottles, I will be putting it in a third bottle, but I will not be flavoring it. So it will be an original flavored kombucha just with an extra fizz. So let's get started. Now I will transfer the scobies from inside of this vessel into this bowl and then I will store it for further use. And don't forget, don't throw away your scobies because they are still healthy and you can use it for the next batch. So I'm just going to open the rubber bands. Ooh, it smells of fermentation. <laughs> To transfer the scoby into the bowl, you can also use your hands as long as your hands are clean or you can also use this ladle or even a pair of tongs. So I'm going to be using this ladle for now. So carefully lift up the scoby. This one is pretty large. Ooh. And then get the smaller one at the bottom that I used at the very beginning. Now don't forget, you will need two cups or at least one cup of starter tea for your next batch of kombucha. So I'm going to be getting two cups and then storing it in this small jar here. I'm going to tilt it a bit. floating around the vessel. I also like to add that into my starter tea just for an extra boost. Okay, now I'm gonna give this a stir. So let's store the starter tea away. So let's prepare the flavoring. So usually I would put the flavorings inside of the bottle first and then putting in the kombucha at last. So let's prepare the first one. So for the ginger and lemon flavor, you will need a half a lemon, just the juices, so you don't need a full lemon. And you will also need one teaspoon of chopped ginger. Okay, so I'm just grabbing a knife in this here. So let's chop this up in half. And then use the lemon juicer, lemon squeezer to bring out the juices. This is the lemon juice and to also add to the lemon juice and also the chopped ginger, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of sugar just to give it an extra kick. So I'm going to funnel the lemon juice inside of this bottle. So we're going to be using this funnel here, put it at the top, then add the chopped ginger. This will be totally fresh. I just love the mixture of ginger and also lemon. It's also good for your health. Now I'm going to add in half a teaspoon of sugar. And there you have it. And now we just need to add in the kombucha. So what I'm going to do now is to pour this kombucha inside of this bottle. bottle it doesn't really matter really how much air space you leave inside of your bottle but it, I just take a rough estimate around one inch ish maybe a bit more make sure that before you close the lid the upper part here is super dry my one because I've been using the funnel carefully there's no you know splattered water or kombucha at the top so I can just close this right away but if you feel that the top part here is quite you know wet from the kombucha it's better for you to wipe it off before you secure the lid Ooh, I can already see some carbonation 
Now let's go on to our second bottle. So for this bottle, I'm going to be inserting a quarter of a cup of raspberry jam. And make sure it is a high quality jam so you could get the best flavor. And also one teaspoon of sugar. If your jam has large bits and the mouth of your bottle actually can fit in a little teaspoon, you can also just add this in manually into the bottle without using the funnel. And then I'm going to add in one teaspoon of sugar. Okay, so now that all the jam and also the sugar is in the bottle, let's pour in the kombucha. So again, I'm going to be using the funnel and pouring this first into the jug before pouring it into the bottle. Now this one is an example if you do want to fill your bottle a bit more to the top. And remember before you put in your lid, just make sure that everything on the top is dry so you'll get a better seal. And for the remaining kombucha, I'm going to be using this third bottle here. It won't fill to the top, but it's still okay. And don't forget to add in one teaspoon of sugar for added carbonation. And you can use a smaller bottle if you have one. So here it is, my two flavored kombucha and one unflavored kombucha. So as you can see, the amount of kombucha inside of the bottles varies, but it's all perfectly okay. This one here is the raspberry kombucha, this one is the lemon and ginger kombucha, and this one is the original non-flavored kombucha. You have to sit this for three to four days in room temperature. It's super important, so don't put this in the fridge yet. So three to four days in room temperature before putting it in the fridge. When you put these bottles inside of the fridge, it will enter a dormant phase. A dormant phase means that there will be no fermentation, so the fungi and also the bacteria will be inactive. After the three to four days, if you feel that there's not much carbonization or fizziness that you would like it to have, you can put it outside again in room temperature for another day before putting it back inside of the fridge. One of the reasons why I like to drink my kombucha cold, not only because of its fizziness and the cool sensation that it gives, but also when you open up a bottle in its cool condition, it will actually reduce the amount of over fizziness and the risk of splattering kombucha everywhere when you open up a bottle. So it is always a good idea to drink this cold. I know there are views out there that state that it is actually not very healthy to drink cold beverages, you know, cold drinks, but if it's just for once in a while, it's perfectly okay. And who doesn't want to drink a cool, fresh bottle of kombucha? Sometimes you will notice that baby scobies will actually form inside of the bottle. If that happens, don't freak out, it's totally okay. What you can do is you can filter it out and eat it, or even just throw it away in the bin. So that is all from me. I hope you found the video super helpful to make your very own kombucha at home. Don't forget to give your thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and found it super helpful. And also share it around to your family and friends so more people will be able to make their own kombucha at home and save some money. Because yes, if you buy kombucha in the supermarket, it can be a little bit more expensive and there's no guarantee that it'll taste as good. And also, it will have preservatives and chemicals added to it so it'll last longer in the supermarket shelves. Unlike your very own homemade kombucha, which uses no preservatives at all. So it is super fresh, super healthy, and super yummy. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to watch the first one, the first fermentation, if you haven't already done so. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!